Hey everyone, it's now June, normally a month when you might be out enjoying a drink in the sun and watching the cricket, but thanks to the coronavirus, the only kind of bat that you're going to see is that one for sale in the Chinese wet market. Did I say cricket? Because I'm pretty sure you can buy those there too, along with grasshoppers, locusts and pangolins, which I've heard taste a bit like pork or duck. You know, I must say that I didn't fight my way to the top of the food chain to be a vegetarian, but I find a general rule in life is that if you don't know what noise an animal makes, don't eat it. Anyway, a summer with no cricket, no beer garden, and strangely, no Wimbledon, which is odd given that the tennis players stand way more than six feet from each other. Rest assured, though, that this summer will be very different all round, with the one exception, I guess, being the riots in America, which will remind many of the long, hot summer of 1967, though everything I always read was that if you could remember the 60s, then you weren't there. For my generation, I guess it'd be the LA riots in the 90s. You know, a truly bizarre piece of trivia regarding that is that the only reason that the Rodney King video ever existed was that the event in question just happened to take place near a motel, which was near to where they were filming Terminator 2 at the time, the, the bar at the start, I think. And one of the motel guests just happened to have a camcorder handy on him in case Arnold Schwarzenegger was kicking around. Nonetheless, we'll leave that topic for another week, potentially. And take a look at the UK, where a range of new proposals have been put forward for easing the lockdown, most of which are completely unworkable in practice. It's a bit like having a separate smoking and non-smoking seat in a taxi, or a no-peeing section in a swimming pool. You know, those who want to take a regional approach to handling the problem seem to have completely forgotten that the thing managed to get in and out of China, Russia, and every other lockdown country in a way, in a way that would make James Bond raise an eyebrow if he wasn't too busy thinking up suggestive things to say to Mod Adams. You know, you either have to open the country up or not, yet the government continues to pursue this on the fence approach to things, probably best summed up by the bizarre situation where trains, ferries and planes are off limits, yet apparently makeshift rafts in the French Channel made out of driftwood are apparently okay. At least the one point of apparent clarity is the government's opposition to extending the Brexit transition period, a policy decision that may actually be getting made out of ideology and reason, or perhaps Boris just doesn't want to have to go and shake hands at a Covid-ridden press conference and end up in hospital again. Certainly Brussels still has lots of plans to hand out money it doesn't have, and yeah, it was always the case, but this time even the Germans are starting to get cold feet about footing the bill for the Italians. You know, it reminds me of an old joke where three construction firms are bidding for an EU contract. The French firm puts in a bid of 10 million euros, then a German firm puts in an offer of 20 million euros with a presentation about the high quality of engineering that they'll offer. Finally, an Italian construction firm puts in a bid of 30 million euros, and a Brussels official phones up the company to ask how they could possibly justify the bid being so high. And the owner taps his nose and says, well, 10 million for you, 10 million for me, and 10 million for the French. Anyway, see you next week. If you like these, click subscribe.